Now, this morning, I, I want to talk to us a bit about walking with God. You know, we are at the end of this year, of 2020. It was a remarkable year. It was a year like no other, okay? Now, before I get into the message, maybe I should give any one of you a chance to just maybe give a testimony or say something that God has done for you in this past year. Um, and, and remember, testimony is something definite that God has done for you, all right? Okay, anybody that wants to testify. Remember, we overcome Satan by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. How did you find this year? How did you see God bring you out? Nobody, nobody, going, going. You know what that means? Now I have to do it. <laughs> you know, when, when COVID, uh, when they locked down, we thought in many respects that it will greatly affect the church and the people and um, our, our uh, income. And you know what? God has really made this whole thing to work for our good. We, we, we are charged around 12 and a half thousand rand a month just to be here for this place that we don't use every day. And as soon as COVID started, I phoned the landlord. I said, listen, I don't think, you know, uh, we, we will be able to do this. Uh, uh, what, what do you say? Um, can't we like, can't you laugh it? He says, you know what? I don't want to lose good tenants, so I will only charge you 2,000 rand a month. So that was the only amount that we had to pay right through the COVID period. And then as we came out of the levels, he increased that we are still not back to the 12 and a half, uh, although we are more than halfway there. But God has been so good to us in that respect, we did not lose out financially. We were able to do it, and obviously because many of our people, our faithful people, faithfully still kept on giving their tithes and their offerings. And so um, uh, we used, at that time, we used my couch as a pulpit. I stood behind the couch, and we, uh, and we, uh, we took it live on, on Facebook. And it was something different, something different. All you could see was the top, so it did, I, I could pre preach there in shorts, and you wouldn't even know it. <laughs> and so God, uh -huh. <laughs> don't let out secrets. <laughs> and so it was, it was in a, in a way fun, but you know what? It could not really be the same, because according to the word of God, we have to be together. And that dynamic uh, was not there. But uh, you know what? We should never allow anything that the world throws at us to keep us from doing the work of God. We should keep on making disciples, reaching out to people, being faithful. And you know, something that stuck with me is faithfulness. I remember years ago, I was a young boy boxing because my dream was to become one day a professional boxer. And I remember one day going to the, to the club and I did all the exercises. I, I never tried to jippo anything. And um, it was in Atlas still, Atlasville there, close to where uh, CFC Joburg is. And um, I remember one day the, the question came to my mind. I thought, why am I doing this? Why, why am I so faithfully doing it? Everybody else is jippoing. And a voice spoke to me inside and said, it's for a reason. I didn't understand it at the time. Uh, years later, I got saved. At the age of 15, I got saved. And this same voice of God now, now I knew it was God's voice, said to me, uh, your boxing days are over. And I had to strip my whole room from all the pictures. You know how young people are? They put up these pictures of whoever they idolize. And I really idolized a lot of these old boxers, you know, these old fighters, uh, uh, Rocky Marciano and Joe Lewis and, and Harry Gutsi at that time was my, was my South African hero. And I didn't like Kali Knutze, so he was not on my wall. <laughs> 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 
But, but so God spoke to me and said, take it all off. You're not going to box. And, uh, you know, sometimes you are like slow in wanting to do. So I took it off. But a few months later, I went back to the, to the um, club. And then God spoke very loud in my spirit. And God said, it's the last time I'm talking to you. And so I knew. Now, obviously, my, my father at, at the time wanted me to, you know, become. I did very well at that time. And he wanted me to become a professional boxer one day, and so he was very disappointed. But I had to choose between the voice of my heavenly father and the voice of my earthly father. And um, I'm telling you this because walking with God is a process of sacrifice and of obeying God to the letter. And as I have found out in my life, and I'll tell you a little bit more of my life, as I have found out in my life, if you don't do it, immediately then you're gonna suffer the consequences and so God knows what he has made you for what he has called you for and if he speaks he I, I, I rarely find that when God tells me to do something that he gives me the reason and so uh, we need to and I suppose it is also because he wants you to trust him he doesn't explain much he's a man well, God's not a man, but he's, he's a God of few words, if I can put it like that, in your personal life. He would say things. You know, I'm always amazed at people that say, God spoke to me, and then they give this whole long conversation that took place. And uh, I tend to doubt that because my experience is God tells you a thing, and it's straight to the point, and you know what he's saying, and he leaves it up to you. And then maybe if you don't do it, he will speak to you again. But by the third time, Buti, if you don't listen, <laughs> it comes through very strong. And uh, he, may, yeah, he may use some other people to speak into your life and reveal some, some of your naughtiness to other people and uh, uh, just to get you in line. But I want to start with the scripture, Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, walking with God. Now, going into next year, I want to say this to you. That is going to be very, 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 very important for you to know how to walk with God. And it's not a difficult thing. We find here in the book of Genesis 5, 24, that there was a man called Enoch. And it simply says, and Enoch, verse 24, and Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. In the New Testament, you read again about him where one, of, where, where one of the writers says he received this testimony that he would not die because he pleased God. And so God took him alive into heaven. And he's still there in his physical body in heaven. Now, um, walking with God, what does it mean to walk with God? It speaks, that walk speaks of your, of your lifestyle and your relationship with God. So it is in close relationship with the Lord. Now remember, this was, Enoch was before the law, before even Christ came and before grace, and he was able to walk with God and to have a relationship with God to such an extent that God said, I am pleased with this man, and uh, I'm not going to let him see death. I'm going to take him. Now, we are standing at a time in, in human history and in the church's history where uh, Jesus Christ is going to come back. And everyone that is walking with God and has close relationship with him, he will remove. We, we know that as the rapture, the catching away or the, the, the catching up of the bride. And it all has to do, this walking, with our relationship how closely we follow him and listen to him, okay? Now, in Amos 3 verse 3, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? So that's where it all starts. You have to, if you want to walk with God, you have to agree with him about your life. And, and don't argue with God. Please don't. You're going to you're going to 
Jy gaan aan die kortste en trek. You gonna miss out if you want to resist him. And I have done that in my life. I remember just, you know, uh, leaving school. At that time, I was praying very hard because I wanted to know, I didn't know what, what to do directly after school. I already knew and had the witness in my heart that I would become a preacher one day. But um, the call was very strong, but I didn't know how. We were part of a small little front shop, front shop church, a very small church, similar like this, maybe less. Uh, that's in, in a place like this that I got saved, uh, in um, West Dean, there close to where Anna Maria and them stay. Just a little, tiny little place, shop front. And then later on, they moved to Newlands uh, and had a, a church building there, but we always stayed small. And um, I knew that God has called me to the ministry. And so I was praying. I was saying, Lord, now after school, uh, you know, those days they would call you up for the army. All the young men, if you are 17, 18, they would call you, call, uh, send you a call-up instruction. Uh, I was 17 at the time. And my call-up instruction was to Bloemfontein. <laughs> And uh, I didn't know what to do. I, I, I somehow felt this was not the, the way that God wanted for me for the next years. And so I prayed because there was only really two choices for me. That is either the police or then my go through the army. And I wanted to know what does God say. And so I prayed and watched in my heart if I felt peace with any one of these, because I, I wanted really to do God's will. And when I thought about Bloemfontein and the army, I, I didn't feel too well inside. When I thought about in prayer now about the police, there was an excitement. And so I knew that God wanted me to go to the police for a specific purpose. That was his direction for my life. And uh, even later on, while I was praying in a certain place, there was a knock on the door, and the person who opened was my, my father then, and he said, do you know Sergeant so-and-so? And I was praying again, because I've heard nothing from them after my application. And he, I said, yes. He said, well, this person says, you must phone him. And, and that's when I, when I phoned, they said, no, you are, you are in, and you are to report. <laughs> I started at Sophia Town. Uh, six months there before I went to college. And I knew this was God confirming I made the right choice. But you know, as you, as you go uh, on with God, sometimes the real life gets to you and you start to question. And I still had this strong desire for the ministry and I don't know how it was supposed to happen. So I made my own plans. You know, I thought, okay, the only way I can do this, I have to get out of the police and just by faith, you know, I have to go and minister because I've read these books about Lester Sumbrell and all these guys that just by faith, uh, there they went without proper training. And so um, uh, I did the same thing and I, and I did feel peace to stay. But I, I thought, no, this can't be, man. God has most called me for the ministry. I had prophecy already at that time. And so, uh, you know, when you want to disobey God, you will take the Bible even. I took the Bible and I said, Lord, now, somewhere here, I know you're going to show me what day and what time. And, and I got scripture for it. Uh, such and such a day of such and such a month uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, did it, resigned. And <laughs> uh, a year later, I was back. <laughs> I went to, uh, to, to, to swimming pool, uh, swimming pool company and I, and I was back. God brought me back. So I started again. This time I started in, um, in Norwood. And again, after about four years or so, five years, I felt, no, I have to get out of this because I need to get into the ministry. Now, God has used me a little bit without really being trained much, but that wasn't enough. And I, and I felt like, no, I have to get out of this. So I, just after I married Cindy, uh, end of that first year, I thought, no, I better get out, started my own business, because now the business is going to support me in the ministry. I did some investigations for, 
for insurance companies and uh, lawyers, and I thought this was it. And so for five years, I, I, I did this, but ministry didn't want to happen. But let me tell you this before, just when I was out, God now, remember it's now twice out, God now sends a prophet into the small church that me and her were members of. And he started to prophesy, Kevin Riley. <laughs> Riley. And he says, God says you are going back to the police and you're going to go and minister to those people. And immediately I said, this man is not from God. You know, that, that kind of attitude that you have, you know, cross your bind in Jesus' name. <laughs> I don't want this. Uh, I hate it. That whole situation. Didn't want to do that. And so, 11 and a half years later, now I've already spent five years doing uh, my business. Oh yeah, this is another thing that happened. When the business started to, to decline because the, my clients now thought of saving money and to, do, to raise the people internally to do the investigations, and it started to decline. I thought, well, the only other thing I can do, I'm not too sure, I want to be a step ahead. Before I totally fail, I'll apply at the police. <laughs> so I did, and I was amongst the very few that got accepted back again. They said most of the applications, they had criminal records. But now they sent me back to Hilbro, and I hated Hilbro. <laughs> Although I met my wife there, I didn't want to be there. So I went there in for the first day. Before the day was gone, I phoned uh, the people that did the recruitment. I said, is my documents already in Pretoria? They said, no, we're going to send it in a few days. I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> and, just, and I got out of it. I worked for, for, for half a day. And all of a sudden, you know, you get this confirmation. Now I get a lot of work from the insurance company. And I thought, okay, this is confirmation. I shouldn't go back to the police. But you know what? Satan can also send you confirmation <laughs> when he wants to get you out of the will of God. And so not long after that, it really, the, the, the business went backwards. And then I started getting involved in ministry here and there. God sent some people in our lives. And, and for eight years, I, I sort of traveled, but I could sense it wasn't God's fullness. It wasn't the fullness. It was like, you know, God would provide, but just enough, just enough, until in 2009 an opportunity came for me to apply as a chaplain in the police. Now, that, that meant 11 and a half years after the prophecy that you will go back, I went back to minister this time. But can you imagine if I obeyed God, never got rebellious, never got out of it, stayed there, things would have been much easier. And I would have been in that uh, place where God wanted me to minister much, much quicker. Okay? So don't argue with God. Don't try and get out of His will. Many times being in the will of God is sacrifice to the flesh. It will mean difficulty to the flesh. And in that time, that eight years, we really experienced difficulty. At one stage, we lost everything. We lost, we had to sell our home. We had to basically lost everything. And we had to start all over again. And the starting over wasn't as quick as it used to be when we just left school or just after we, we got married. It was a very slow coming back financially and and that sort of thing. Um, and I've learned that walking with God means you obey Him. You leave your own desires. You leave your own ambitions. And you do what He says when He says it. Okay? Don't argue with God. Now Luke 18 verse 27 to 30. But He said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And then Peter said, See, we have left all our own and followed you. And so he said to them, Assuredly I say to you, there is no one 
who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. Now, I just want to throw in this because I'm thinking of it now. Uh, when I was still in school praying about my future, asking God about a wife and, and things like that, God gave me a scripture in Isaiah, I believe it was, where he says the children of her that did not bear will be so much more. He, her that did not bear will have so much more children. And I, I, I knew in my heart that I, will, I was not going to have children, and I interpreted it as I will not marry. But it didn't turn out that way. I got married, and although I have no biological children, I had other children. And even in the ministry, I had children. And so um, God worked it out. Even with all the mistakes that I've made, God worked it out to be as He has designed it. Okay? Now, I know that I'm not fully there yet because there's some other things that I still need to lay down. I remember the first prophetic word that I've received in that the, 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 the man of God said, God will ask of you legitimate things. With other words, things that are acceptable to do, things that are acceptable for, for, for other people, God will want you to lay it down so that you can serve Him. And uh, I've said to the pastors on the, leader, on the retreat, you know, uh, serving God means that you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to make a, 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 a decision to live on another plane. And it is really everything or nothing with God when God calls you into ministry and even into Christianity you, you can't be like everybody else you have to be separate okay now with God or being with God walking with God is not just receiving Jesus as Savior not just making a decision and getting born again and going to church it's not just about that that is all training ground now. Going to church, going to home church, going uh, even to Bible college. That is training. That's a continuous lifestyle of being dis discipled or disciplined. There's a lot of discipline. I found out walking with God in my life meant a lot of discipline. And I, and I can assure you I was not the easiest child of God. Uh, I, I'm sure my angels worked over time and still do sometimes. I'm sure of it because I, I, I'm, I tend to be rebellious. And uh, I found out the hard way that it will always get you into trouble. And you make the road for yourself so much the more difficult. Okay? And so it's not just about going to church and feeling good about yourself and that sort of thing. It is really a lifestyle of discipline so that you can be used by the master. Paul says to Timothy, he says, if you get rid of the vessels of dishonor, then you will be meat for the master's use. With other words, everything that is, that is, that is vile and that is... Uh, not right and that is not useful even get rid of it get rid of it so that you can focus on doing the master's will I remember a, a man of God once said uh, he uh, him and his wife do not even buy anything that they cannot use for the ministry that's how they lived because they felt that God has made them stewards over everything that they have and they will not buy anything even if they cannot use it for the ministry and I think that sort of attitude should be within us whatever we plan whatever we do we must see ministry in it we must see it as a vehicle for ministry so it's, it's really about a lifestyle walking with God is a lifestyle it's not an event that happened once and let, let me tell you it's not about and an encounter once in your life or several encounters it is a continuous 
relationship. And we thank God for specific encounters that happen. Sometimes God uses an encounter just to kickstart you, to kick you on the butt, get you back into line. But you and I must make up our minds in this coming year. Because who knows what's coming? Who knows whether the 2021 is not going to be much worse and much challenging than 2020. In my heart, I believe we will see some good things, but I also believe we're going to see some tough uh, things happening. Now, I know in my heart as well, the time comes that I have to say goodbye to the police. I just know it. It's been prophesied and, and, and uh, through various people. I know it in my heart. But now the timing is, is right. I'm not going to make the mistakes I've made before. I will wait until God says, uh, now you go. And it may be uh, not too, too far off. I don't know. We're going to pray about that. Now, if Jesus is your Lord, I want you to think about the word Lord and what it means. Lord means I rule and reign over you. If you call Jesus Lord, you are saying, I submit to you. You are the one who makes the decisions concerning my life. I can no longer make the decisions. Have you seen it? Well, we, we, we don't have that kind of example really in modern life of a slave and a master. But here when the Bible was written, they had that as a, as a good example. Um, a slave cannot have any say, not even over his body. Did you know that? He belonged to his master, body, soul, and spirit, if you will. He could not eat if his master said, uh, did not, not say you can eat. He was not free to roam wherever he wanted to go. And if his master so desired, he could sell him off. He could sell his children to someone else. He could sell his wife off. And so when we say Jesus is our Lord, it means that we belong to him. We have no say over our own lives. I want you to know that. It's not about God going to make your dream come true. In fact, in my own life, I had to lay down my dream and my desire. It's all about what he has in store. So if Jesus is Lord, we have to follow him. Follow the guidance of his voice. He's the shepherd. He's the one that we need to listen to. We are not living for ourselves. He has all the say over our lives, what we do and where we go. I remember coming here to Kruger's door. We, we just started a church in the police station. I felt led by God to do that. And uh, then, f and it was like independent. And, 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 and God spoke to me and said, no, you should come under the covering of someone. And uh, we met a, a guy that was already in uh, CFC and he had some churches and I spoke to him. And... Um, after speaking to him that night, God gave me a vision in a second. I saw a hand coming from, from, from heaven, and it had white on. The sleeve was white, and on the sleeve, beautifully embroidered blue. It looked like this, blue. And, it, and there was a door, and this hand was about to open the door, but coming from heaven. And I knew immediately God says, I am opening a door. You need to step into this thing. And I, I checked up on the internet because I thought immediately priestly garment. And lo and behold, I found that the priestly garments of the Old Testament was white with the specific blue, the Israeli blue. Uh, the pattern was not the same. And uh, that's how we got involved. And uh, we attended the service here in Krugersdorp in the old building. There was a pastor, Fani, with a small group of people, and we went to, to now uh, sort of support them because we've now joined CFC, and they were going to open this church. And as we came into the building, on floor, <laughs> ground level, there was a board, and on the board was written, Fun Fearen. 
And uh, there was some lawyers in the building, and, and their surname was from Firin. And I said to Sandy, this better not be prophetic, because I don't want to be in Kruger's door. <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> And so it happened that we ended up here, yeah, moved our church we, because Fani then left. And soon after that, he died, young man. And uh, we brought all our people, lost off half of our people, but we started afresh in that, that same building where I said, not here, please, not here. And so God, you have to go where God sends you. And I still sometimes feel, Lord, if maybe I had a ministry in another place, it would have been better. May have been. <laughs> but stay where God has called you. And we're still going, and God still keeps his hand through everything that we went through. Church splits and betrayals and all of those things, God still kept his hand on us. We've not lost out financially, not the church not us personally. We, God has just kept us. Now, sometimes it feels like it's still, uh, there's still limitations and, and you want to break forth into something else, something greater, but I know God at the right time will do it. Most probably when He's disciplined me enough and He can trust us enough. And God is giving us good people, good people. Our pastors that we now have in our church, they're good people, and they are people of unity. And I even enjoyed the pastor's retreat much more than the previous one. And so, and we laughed a lot more. And uh, that was good. <laughs> so, following Jesus means there will be times that you will have to give up things that are legitimate I've heard that in prophetic word. I've experienced that in my life. You know, just going to the movies, for example, is legitimate. And God will say to you, no, I don't want you to do it anymore. Uh, many other things. Playing a sport, doing this, doing that. It may be a very legitimate. And God will say, I don't want you to do that anymore. Reading Western books like I used to do. Louis L'Amour. There will come a time when God says, I want you to lay that off now. There's nothing wrong with it. It's clean books. You can learn principles there even. It's a good writer. It transports you into another uh, time frame. But there's a time that God says, no, I want you to lay down those things. So making a sacrifice will mean leaving a group of friends even who do not want to serve God wholeheartedly. Because you are influenced by the friends you surround yourself with. And there may come a time that God says no. Not that God hates them, but for your own spiritual growth, leave them behind. It may be family. For us, it was family and friends. Uh, and uh, we really don't have much family around us. But, uh, I'm, I'm talking about blood family. Because you cannot live there anymore. You cannot live on that plane anymore. If you do, you will be kept back by them. And so, sometimes you'll have to move out of your comfort zone. In Abram's case, he also had to leave his family behind. And when he disobeyed in taking one with him, it only meant trouble. There was always fighting. And sometimes family think they are doing good to you. And advising you and, and speaking into your life. Thinking they are doing you good. Whereas God has said something else. Okay, I remember when I told my family, God called me into the ministry, uh, my brother said, don't you think we'll help you? We're not, we're not for this, you know. Ministry and missionary and this, um, that's, not, that's not making money. That's not living. That's not good. And coming back to the thing of you cannot walk together unless you are agreed. Even in marriage, you cannot be together unless you're agreed. And I remember, remember when just before we got married, I said to, to Pastor Sinny, I said, listen, there will be times, I know it in my heart, long before we were in ministry, uh, that God will send me into the mission field and I will be away for time and then come home and, and, and uh, you better know that. Can you live with that? And she said, yes. 
And so we agreed on that. And that is what happened at times. It doesn't happen nowadays anymore so often, but it does. It did happen in the beginning, a, a lot of time away. It was even months away, eh? But you have to be agreed. How much time have I got? Five, seven minutes. When you walk with the Lord, there will be priorities. We hear a lot about priorities, but there will be priorities. Not your own priorities, but His priorities. We will put first things first. And it's so that God requires a certain standard from those that are to walk with Him. Enoch lived on a certain plane that was higher than everybody else in his generation. And so we need to live on a higher plane with God. You cannot be like the world anymore because God is holy. That means different. Holiness means as part of what holiness is, is being different. God says, come ye out of the world, separate yourselves because you are holy. And so we need to, we need to know that we are expected by God as Christians to walk on another level, not to do the things that the world does, not to copy and follow the world, but to be the trendsetters for our generation. We need to show people how to live for God, just like Jesus came and showed us how to live for the Father. And his lifestyle was pretty different, pretty different. Our priority should always be obedience to His Word and staying in close relationship with Him. If you can just take these two things away here, that my priority must be obedience to God. When He speaks, don't do as I did. Go my own way, resist, argue, uh, half obey. Don't do that. Obey fully immediately when He speaks. And you'll be advanced much quicker. And relationship with Him. Don't ever let anything take the place of your relationship with God. He must come above all else. Above children, above wife, above family, above work. The relationship with God must be number one. Okay? Don't fall into the trap of saying, I don't have enough time. Give God the first of your time. Amen. God must be first. We must constantly fill ourselves with His Word in His presence. It's when we spend time alone in His Word that revelation comes to us personally. It's good to receive revelation from other people and other preachers. But you know when you receive it like that secondhand, then you still have to work it in. You still have to make it part of yourself. You still have to meditate in it before it really becomes revelation to you. But when you get it from God's word, it's like that. And the change happens because it's revelation that you got from the Spirit of God. And uh, as you live it out, you can also give it out to other people. Amen? I'm skipping now, yeah. Commitment to God is a lifestyle. I want to just reiterate that. And there's some rewards. Let's end with this thing. There's some rewards of doing life with God. And I want you to, in 2021, make a quality decision that you're going to do life with God. He's going to be number one. We are maybe a few years away from the rapture of the church. And now is the time to make sure that God is number one. We still have this grace time, this little bit of time. Compared to eternity, it's a few minutes. Make sure that you are right with God, that you have your relationship established, that you are in communication with God, that you hear what He's saying to you, what to do, because we will, know, we will need to know what to do in the next few years individually. It can mean the difference between life and death. 
Rewards of life with God, 1 Timothy 4, 8 says, For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things. So when you live for God, it profits every area of your life. Okay? You say, but what about getting slim? Because bodily exercise does that for me. Well, if you, if you live for God, there will be times of fasting and prayer, and that will keep you in shape. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So it is profitable for this life and also for eternity. Remember, we are going into eternity. And we should live with eternity in mind like, like John Bevere says. And I will um, uh, advise you to get his book. Uh, I think it's called Eternity Driven. And um, it's all about having eternity in mind. You see, if we have the mindset of here and now only, we are most miserable. But when we have eternity in mind, our lifestyle changes and what we do changes, and we know that what we do here impacts eternity. Hebrews 11 verse 5 says, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him, just like with Elijah, taken him alive into heaven. For before he was taken... He had this testimony that he pleased God. And God is so gracious to you and me that he, when we have believed, placed us in Jesus, whom, of whom he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So now you being in Christ, God is well pleased with you. If you remain in Christ, which means that some of those benefits we can have. And when he comes back in our lifetime, we're going up, just like Enoch went. And they will look for you, and they will not find you. Oh, Butch will look for you, and he will not find you. Okay? <laughs> or maybe he will go up as well. I don't know. Luke 18, verse 29 to 30 says, And so he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left houses or parents or brothers, or wife, or children, for the sake of the kingdom of God, who shall not receive many more things in this present time, and in the age to come, eternal life. Amen? And God has planned eternal life for each one of us. So my message for you going into 2021 is simply this, walk with God. Make God your priority. Make sure that all your ducks are in a row. Make sure that you've repented from all sin and that you are clean, okay? And if there are struggles still in your life, trust God. Confess deliverance. Confess victory in those areas, amen? And trust God and do everything in your power to live life the way Jesus said we are to and stay ready. Because in 2021, anything can happen. And I think here in the first part, we will be quite, quite surprised at the turn the world is going to take. And so be ready always to meet the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Is there anybody that is sick? You've got pain. I'm not going to call you to the front. What we're going to do is we're going to do just a, a mass prayer. Anybody, anybody, anybody? You're all happy, healthy. You can run the 21 Ks. <laughs> I know there's some need, so let's just, let's just close our eyes. And I want you, whatever is wrong with you and your body, and I know several of you, there's things wrong in your body. I want you to just mentally bring it to the Lord as we pray. And we're going to pronounce healing. Amen. I still believe that Jesus heals. And Jesus delivers. And so um, let's, let's pray and trust the Lord, will you? You don't want to go with this thing into 2021. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your word and you healed us of all of our diseases. And Lord, I pray, lifting up every need to you, everyone who has pain, who has a condition that has not been healed yet, 
that's still manifesting as a problem in their bodies. Lord, we bring it to you, looking unto Jesus, who is our healer, who is the, the author and the finisher of our faith. And Jesus, we call upon your name, and we pray for deliverance of these things, the pains, the conditions, skin conditions, allergies, back pains, whatever it is, deafness in the name of Jesus, we ask for deliverance. But Father, we also pray for financial breakthroughs and we ask, Lord, that you will keep each one of us body, soul, and spirit, that you keep us until the day of the manifestation of Jesus Christ when he comes at the sound of the last trump. Father, keep us in your will. Keep us in obedience to you. Protect us, Lord, from that which is false and from the, the doctrines of devils that are now coming upon the scene one after the other so rapidly. Keep us from deception. Keep us in your word, we pray. And we thank you for that. Lord, we pray for those of our family members and friends that's not yet saved and that, that, that does not want to commit their lives to the Lord, that you put an urgency within their spirits, that, they will, that you will speak to them, that they will have their personal encounter with you. And Lord, that they will turn from every wicked way to serve God in the name of Jesus. And give us strength, Lord, to be witnesses for you. I pray, Lord, that as we go out into the world in this 2020, 2021, Lord, that we will be able to impact our surroundings, impact people, bringing many souls to Jesus. And we thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen.